بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سعد اور خان یوٹیوب چینل وی ٹو ڈے موسٹ پرابلی دا لاسٹ ویڈیو آن دی انڈرسٹینڈنگ آف بی جی ٹیز جسٹ سمپل ٹرمس دیٹ ریمین ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ سو دا فرسٹ لیٹ سی وی ٹاک اباؤٹ از دا ریلیشن شپ دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین الفا بیٹا اینڈ گیما So alpha is the current amplification factor in the common base configuration. So alpha, and I told you it has got a DC component. It is, one of them is alpha DC, one of them is alpha AC. So alpha is IC upon IE. IC upon IE, right? Yes. Similarly, alpha AC, this would be what? This would give, this would be from the change of IC to the change of IE. Yes, so you know this for y for dc is a fixed value. For the ec, we'll take the, the, the difference of any two values. We'll take any two points, right? Similarly, then you have got beta. So beta dc is what? This is now the current amplification factor for the common emitter configuration. So the output is ic, the input is ib, right? So ic by ib. ic divided by ib. Similarly, your beta ac This would be change of IC to the change of IB. And then you have a gamma. So you have a gamma DC. So this would be for the common collector configuration. IE upon IB. IE upon IB. IE. IE, right? No, sorry. Uh, yes, IE upon IB, yes. IE upon I. B. Similarly, you have a gamma AC. This would be a change of IE upon the change of IB. Right? So these are the current amplification factors for all the three transistor configurations. Now we know that IE is equal to as IE is equal to IC plus IB. This is the basic equation. IC plus IB. I divide all the sides by IB. Dividing by the base current IB. So IE upon IB. This will be equal to IC upon IB plus 1. Or let me just name it as IB upon IB. So IE upon IB is what? IE upon IB is gamma. And this is equal to IC upon IB which is beta. And then plus 1. So gamma is equal to beta plus 1. In the previous video, I have already told you. So this is one relation. This is gamma is equal to beta plus 1. Now beta, beta is equal to alpha upon 1 minus alpha. Yes, beta is equal to alpha upon 1 minus alpha. You know this? Yes. So put it over here. So this implies what? That gamma is equal to alpha upon 1 minus alpha plus 1. So this is equal to alpha plus 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. So gamma is equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha. This implies what? That gamma is equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha. right yes so which means that you have got your final relation and the final relation is of the form that that gamma is equal to beta plus one and this is equal to one over one minus alpha so this is the relation between alpha beta and gamma where you can use it interchangeably wherever you want to use it wherever you need it so, next I have a little, a smaller thing again. I have the uh, secondary breakdown. Secondary breakdown is what? So, let me tell you. Secondary breakdown. One is the primary breakdown, right? Primary breakdown is what? Primary breakdown is the avalanche breakdown. It's the simple avalanche breakdown that we have studied. This occurs what? Occurs due to the increase of the reverse bias potential. When you increase the reverse bias potential to a certain value, so this would uh, break down. 
And what is that reverse bias? So depending on the configuration, connected to base, connected to emitter, whatever it is, you know this avalanche breakdown occurs when the breakdown voltage is reached and the breakdown voltage is of course the reverse bias voltage. But the secondary voltage is due to the change of temperature. So if the temperature is increased, if the temperature is increased, what happens is that the reverse current would increase. The reverse saturation current, let's say ICBO would increase. If this ICBO increases, so this has a part to play in the collector current, that would increase. Yes, why? Because IC is alpha times IE plus ICBO. So if ICBO is increasing, IC has definitely to increase. So this means the power dissipation, the power dissipation, which would be VCE multiplied by IC. This is the power dissipation in the form of heat. This would increase. Power dissipation would increase. And this is for the common emitter, right? This is for the common emitter. So if the power dissipation increases, this is mean the energy is lost in the form of heat. If the energy is lost in the form of heat, this implies what? That the temperature has further increased and, it, and we have came back to the original step, which means that this is a regenerative process. This is a regenerative process, which means that again, now the temperature has further increased, the reverse leakage current would further increase, the collector current would further increase, the power dissipation would further increase, which would in turn again have more heat loss and more temperature would increase and the BJT will burn. The device has damaged. Yes? Yes. So this is the, the, the what? This is called the secondary breakdown and this is also called the self heating property of BJT this is the secondary breakdown and this is the self heating property of BJT fine yes so from here you could see what from here you could see that the the, 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 the BJT has a negative temperature coefficient. BJT has negative temperature coefficient and you know this whatever it is. Which means that if the temperature is increased, the current through it has increased or the resistivity has decreased. Whatever it is negative temperature coefficient, you know very well. So in order to avoid this secondary breakdown, the Proper cooling must be there. We are not interested in the cooling mechanism. Right? In diode, we have only one breakdown. That would be either avalanche or zener. But over here in BJT, we have two breakdowns. So in diode, we have only one breakdown. That would be either avalanche or the zener breakdown. But in the BJT, we have primary plus secondary breakdown, two breakdowns, right? BJT is not operated in parallel in a circuit. No parallel operation of BJT in a circuit, no. Parallel operation of BJT in a circuit, why? So let's see, if this is your BJT, this is connected in parallel across some load. The load current is I2. This current is I1. The total current entering is I. So have a look. What happens is if the, if the temperature increases, if the temperature increases, so the collector current increases, the current will die, the BJT increases, that is I1 would increase. If I1 increases, this means that I2 would decrease. So a point will come, a point will come where the overall current I would approximately become equal to I1. No current would flow through the load. The entire current would flow through the BJT. The BJT has got damaged. The BJT has got damaged. Yes, yes. You can use the BJT as a single diode as well. How is that? How is that if you short the collector in the base? The BJT is a single diode. BJT as diode. So how do you use it? So let me tell you. 
let's say this is your base this is your collector this is your emitter npn transistor what do you do is you have got two what npn so this is n this is p again a p again an n n p n transistor i want to use one of them what do i do let's say i shot out these two i shot out these two what do i have i only have one term this is the n terminal no sorry this is the p terminal this is the n terminal so i have got a single diode and that would be what that would be with respect to the base the base and the emitter terminal so this would be plus this would be minus i've got a forward bias diode this is minus this is plus i've got a reverse bias diode the bjt as a diode it would follow the same relation i is equal to the same relation the exponential relation whatever that is is that clear it should be it should be right it is if we compare the three if we compare all the three configuration of transistors comparison so let us do a quick comparison common base common emitter common collector what do we have the first thing is the input resistance so we've already seen this basically but let's say again so for a common base it's low for common emitter it's high it's low for common collector again the output resistance is very high for common base it's high for common emitter and it's low for this phase shift zero degrees 180 by common emitter this is an important point zero degrees by common collector the voltage gain is high for this one it's moderate for the common emitter and it's low for the common collector the current gain is low for common base it's moderate to high for the common emitter because of the value of beta you could say this is high beta is quite a high value and then the, the for the common collector it's high again because we have a factor of beta plus one which is gamma right yes similarly the power gain so the power gain over here is 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 moderate you could say over here it's high over here it's moderate that is it about the bjt configurations the important one the most practical one is the common emitter configuration what is the practicality the practicality is the high power gain it is used in power amplifiers the most important is the 180 degree phase shift that it is providing if we need it as an inverting amplifier right yes so that is all about it that is all i had to tell you that is all about chapter 3 for me you have specification sheets of the transistor you can just uh, simply read it out in the books the whatever is required would be given over there whenever you are performing in the laboratory with the bjt's ask your instructor for the specification sheet right and and study that so you should at least know how what is the specification sheet what is written over there and how is it that is it for me for the chapter number three i will start chapter number four from the next videos inshallah very soon till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel do like and follow me on the facebook page as well all the links are given in the description goodbye